What's up, Phrase? Welcome to Athia. This is Kaz, and I'll be your guide. I'm going to be spending this video showing you around this magical, mystical, and dangerous as land of Athia. Now, I've already done a full three-part video, but it was almost 20 minutes, so I wanted to break it down into the different parts. So if you've seen that video, this will be repetitive. If not, this is just the first part of that video. Appreciate you watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks, y'all. Okay, so what the hell is a beginner and why should you be watching this video? Well, I made this for the section of the game where you have phrase magic or purple magic and Silas magic or red magic. I've put over 25 hours into the full game and 25 hours into this like demo if that helps you at all. And I would say up to and including chapters 5, 6, 7-ish is where this video is relevant. I have some helpful tips separated out into sections starting with things that will make your life easier, tips to help you upgrade faster, lots of goodies on how to Do get your badass sorcery skills where they need to be, and some guidance on where to go first and story progression. So let me just take a second to say, you know, guides like this are a little complicated because there's tips and there's your style. So I think the number one thing to keep in mind is hopefully these help you, but your style is really important. How you want to explore, how you want to engage in combat and upgrade, all of that's important too. So hopefully some of this helps inform your style, starting with some things that can make your life easier in Athia. That's our first part. Athia is a big place and there are some things you can do right off the bat to help you get oriented. So when you get to a new area, start by looking for the refuge. This is where you can craft, upgrade, spell craft, do some spell crafting and rest. Look for belfries that can help you get the lay of the land and also save you time because you can fast travel there too. And damn, Forspoken fast travel is fast, y'all. Like straight up teleportation. That's been wonderful, not having load screens. Home? Founts will give you spells Thank when you, you visit them. So those are great to prioritize because, hey, who doesn't want a free spell? One other thing that kind of helped me get oriented early on is by reminding myself there's no shortage of treasure and break butt heads out there to beat up. So I would say worry about those after you've gotten oriented and stick around to the end to learn a little bit more about what to do once the map opens up. Another tip that's really helped me early on is using the cuff compass in cities and castles in particular. By holding up on the D-pad on PS5, cuff will show you the route to your next objective. The compass is also helpful if you're trying to find a way up some terrain that's really annoying to try and get up. So the map and its features in Forspoken are pretty legit. When you see a new area, it shows you where everything is, which can really help with exploring and being real efficient with how you get around. It's also great because you can zoom in and it becomes 3D, which is great to see if there is something on the other side of a wall or the best path you need to go to get where you need to go. I use waypoints a ton in this game to really help me save some time and chart the best path or progression to what I'm looking for so definitely appreciate the 3d map and those waypoints all right next and not just because it looks really cool but you can press triangle to open a chest while you're in mid-air or parkouring and this is great if you need to smash and grab a chest a chest from a mutant that you aren't ready to fight or open a chest while you're panic climbing up something and worried you might not land right where you need to yeah, so not gonna lie, the next one, I pretty much spam up on the D-pad. Cuff scans help you find goodies and people to talk to in cities, help you see where collectibles are, and help you scout enemies, so use cuff scan a lot, I say. Next is scouting with cuff. So speaking of scouting, let's talk about how Forspoken does you some favors with how it allows you to scout. When you press up on the D-pad to do a cuff scan and you scan a bogey, you can press up again to get scouting uh, scouting report. And this includes, very importantly, what magic that bogey is vulnerable to. The arrows on the wheel in the upper right indicate what the bogey is resistant to and what they're vulnerable to. The way I remember is up is like thumbs up, as in, yes, use that. They're vulnerable to it. Down is thumbs down, or don't use it because they're resistant. Don't forget to read the blurb, too. Sometimes it offers hints on how to hack a baddie. There's even more in-depth scouting you can do. And another way to get even more info is by finding the bogey type in the archive. So here it will show you their max health, attack rating, experience, and all that can be used to determine if you're ready to take on that baddie or maybe come back when you you're a more badass sorceress. 
there's a lot of info out there about the best settings. Well, I don't know if there's really best settings, but I will show you what I used and what might be helpful for you early on, though I appreciate there's a lot of individual preference. Early on, I looked to have spell switching to full pods because we all need time to learn, and this helped me get used to what spells are where without having to worry about a bird swooping and break stabbing me in the chest. God damn those birds, y'all. Automatically using heal items is nice as well as this one less thing to worry about. Lastly, I use automatic support spell switching because it feels like the best of all worlds. I can still use the spell wheel to get the right spell for the right job and by automatically rotating to whatever is ready, I can use something in a pinch and that's not gonna have me in my spell wheel all the time. Now let's talk about accessibility settings first. There's a lot here, so definitely play around. Other than that, I've really appreciated automatic item gathering just to make life a little easier and changing leap soar to semi-automatic so you aren't having to press circle as much when trying to climb to something high. Last thing in this section is talking about what you can do after you beat the game and new game plus, and that's important because it can help inform what you do even in the early game. I've been trying to figure this out and it's still not super clear, so hit me up in the comments if you have more details. It seems to me before the final boss, there's time to go wrap anything up, including some trophies. Just remember that some detours and side missions go away after you progress, so be careful there. It also sounds like you can roam after you beat the boss, but again, I'm still not clear, so let me know if you have any more details. And that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'm in my push to a thousand subs and I really look forward to your like and subscribe.